Hello everyone, welcome to our new video. In today's lecture, you will see how to set up Facebook Pixel for e-commerce events. Events like view content, add to cart, view cart, checkout and purchase. So without further ado, let's get started. So we'll be using this website for setting up e-commerce event for Facebook, you know. So if I choose any of the products then what i will basically do when a user view these items or products i want to track view content event you know and whenever the user uh, add this product to cart then i want to track add to cart event similarly when a product view this product to the cart then i want to fire view cart event and whenever a user go to the checkout section then i want to track checkout event and last of all when a user go to the purchase section and fill up all the billings informations from here and click on place order then i want to track purchase event okay so we'll be tracking the whole e-commerce journey of an user okay so hopefully you have understood so for this e-commerce event tracking i'm going to be using google tag manager so i have created a google tag manager account for this website you can see over here media Web. web. okay and we'll be using ga4 schema for setting up e-commerce events so if you are a, a custom made website owner then you can give this doc link to your developer so that he or she can enable data layer using this doc, you know. So after enabling data layer on your custom made site, then you can easily create all the data layer variables and all the events, tag triggers and all uh, kind of stuff, you know. So for me, I'll be using WordPress CMS for showing you uh, this video, you know. So I'm gonna copy this doc file link and provide it in the video description so that you can uh, you can access this doc easily. And if you are a uh, custom made website owner or if your business runs on custom made website, then you can provide this doc file to your developer. Okay, so. As I already told you, my website is WordPress WooCommerce. So uh, for enabling data layer, I need to go to the admin panel of my site. So for going to the admin panel, I just need to enter my website URL over here. Then I'm going to write slash WP minus admin. Okay. Then I'm going to click on enter. Then I will install a plugin. Okay. So I'll go to the plugin section and I'm going to click on add new then I'm going to search for a plugin called GTM for WP okay this plugin GTM for WP so I have already installed this plugin what you need to do is to install this plugin and activate this plugin and if you go to the settings portion then you will see a Google tag manager is available here so whenever you click this link they will suggest you to put a tag manager code over here so i'm gonna go to the tag manager section and copy this code from here and paste it over here okay perfect then i'm gonna click on save changes so google tag manager has been installed on our website perfectly now we'll enable data layer for this site so for enabling data layer i'll go to the integration section then i'm gonna choose woocommerce from there and make sure you have enabled this check mark calls track enhanced e-commerce okay so mine is enabled make sure yours are too okay then i'm gonna click on save changes okay then if i scroll down a little bit make sure this radio button is on so if it is off it will not be working so mine is on make sure yours are too so i'm gonna click on save changes so Google Tag Manager and Data Layer has been installed on our website properly. So for checking whether it is working or not, I'll go to an extension called 
Google Tag Assistant Legacy. Then I'll click on this enable button and I'm going to refresh the site. Then if I go to the Tag Assistant Legacy again, then we can see Google Tag Manager is available here. So if I try to match this code, then you can see over here GTM M. 57q3 so if i go to the google tag manager you can see gtm m7 gmq3 so both codes are matching that means google tag manager has been installed on our website properly so if i try to check whether data layer has been installed on our website properly or not then i will choose one of the products then i will add this product to the cart Then I'm gonna take the help of an extension called data layer checker. Then you can see view item event is firing. So if I click on this, you can see all the necessary parameters or variables are available here. That means our uh, data layer has been working properly on our site. Okay, perfect. Let's go to the tag manager section. So the first thing I need to do is to go to the template section because we'll be setting up uh, e-commerce events using a template. So I'm going to go to the template section and from tag templates, I'm going to click on search gallery. Okay. Just wait a little bit. Then I'm going to click on this search button and I'm going to search for Facebook pixel. So I need to write Facebook. Sorry for the delay. I'm going to write Facebook again. Facebook pixel. Okay. So you can see this option called Facebook pixel, Facebook archive. So I'm going to click on this arrow and I'll click on add to our space and I'm going to click on add. Okay. So this template has been installed on the GTM. Okay. Then I'll go to the variable section. I'll create a variable for Facebook Excel ID. So I'm going to name it as Facebook Excel ID. Okay. Then I'm going to choose variable configuration as constant variable. Then I need to copy uh, the PGL ID from business manager. So I'll go to the business manager and I'm going to click on business settings. Just wait a little bit. It might take some time, you know, then I'm going to click on all tools section. And from there, I'll click on event manager. Okay. Just wait a little bit again. Then I'm going to click on connect data sources. I'm going to choose OF from here and I'm going to click on connect. Then I have to name the pixel. So I'm going to name the pixel according to my website. So my website is name is Medialytics e-commerce. So I'm going to name the pixel as Medialytics e-commerce pixel. Okay. Then I'm going to click on create pixel. Then I have to provide my website URL. So I'm going to copy my website URL from here and paste it into the website URL section. And I'm going to click on check and I'll click on next. And I'm going to select do it yourself and I'll click on next again. So you can either choose conversion API or Metapixel. So for the time being, I'm going to be choosing Metapixel. So I'll click on next. Then if I go to the data source section, then we can see Medialytics 6 Commerce Pixel is available here. So I will go to the settings option and copy this pixel ID from here and go to the tag manager and paste it in the value section. So I'm going to click on save. Okay. Perfect. Then I'll go to the tag section. So the first tag I'm going to be creating is for Facebook base pixel. So I'm going to click on new and name the tag as 
Facebook base pixel. I'm gonna choose tag configuration as Facebook pixel. Then I'll be using Facebook pixel ID from here. So I'm gonna be choosing Facebook, Facebook pixel ID and as the event, I'm gonna be choosing page view, you know. And if I go to the triggering section, then I'm gonna be choosing it as all pages. So I'm gonna click on save. Okay, so for, for checking whether Facebook base pixel has been installed on our website or not, I'm gonna click on preview section. Okay. Then I need to provide my website URL over here. Then I'm gonna click on connect. Okay. You can see over here tag assistant connected and if I go to the tag assistant section you can see over here Facebook pixel is firing. It has fired one time. Okay. So the next tag I'm going to be creating is for view content. So before creating view content tag I need to create all the necessary variables for view content then I'm going to create the triggers for view content and then at last I'm going to create the tags for view content okay so I'll click on variable section then we need to create four variables for view content so content name content id value and current currency you know so I'll go to the view item event and go to the data layer from this section then we'll create data layer variable from here okay so you can see we can get the item names item id and item price from the item array so i need to create data layer variable from this section so this items is inside e-commerce object so i need to copy e-commerce from here then as this is a object so i'm gonna put dot then I'll come to the item section. Okay, and then I'm gonna copy items from here. Then and go to the data layer again. Then you can see this is an array. So I need to take the item ID as this one is array. So you know array's index starts from zero. So I'm gonna put zero items dot zero. Then I'm gonna take this one item id okay so i'm gonna copy item id from here so this is for content id and this portion will remain same for all the data layer variable so i'm gonna copy it from here then we'll go to the data layer again you can see over here e-commerce items dot zero dot item name so i'm gonna copy item name from here and put it over here and I'm going to copy this portion again because this will remain same. Then I'll go to the data layer again and I'm going to take items dot zero dot price. Okay. So copy it from here and paste in the price section. So I'll go to the tag manager and click on user defined variable and click on new. Okay. So I'll create data layer variable then i'm gonna name it as product sorry i'll name it as item id then i'll click variable configuration as data layer variable and i'm gonna copy this value item id value from here e-commerce dot items dot zero dot item id so i'm gonna paste it over here in the data layer variable name section and click on save then i'll create another variable for item name so i'll write it as dlv item name then i'm gonna choose variable configuration as data layer variable then i'm gonna this i cop i'm gonna copy this item name from here and paste it in the data layer variable section so i'm going to click 
accept and the next data layer variable I'm going to be creating is for item price. So I'm going to name it as DLB item price. Okay, then I'm going to choose variable configuration as data layer variable and I'm going to put the value as ecommerce.items.0.price. Okay, so I'm going to paste it over here, then click on save. Okay, perfect. Then we'll create another variable for currency. Okay. So I'm gonna create another data layer variable. So I'll click on new and name the variable as DLB currency. Okay, and I'm gonna choose variable configuration as data layer variable. So if I go to the data layer section, then you can see e-commerce dot currency. So currency is inside commerce object so i'm going to copy e-commerce from here and as this one is an object so i'm going to put dot over here and i'm going to copy currency from here okay so i'm going to paste currency over here so i'm going to click on save so we have created all the necessary data layer variables for view content tag okay so I'm going to the trigger section, then we'll create a trigger for view content. So I'm going to click on new and name the trigger as view content trigger. Okay. Then I'm going to choose trigger configuration as custom event and I'll name the event as data layer event. So I'll scroll up a little bit then you can see event is available here so i'm going to copy this event name from here like view underscore item and paste it over here so you can collect this event name from the gf4 schema as well so if i scroll down a little bit and select view item details then you can copy the event name from here make sure you are copying the exact naming sequence from here and from here as well. So you can either use this uh, data layer segment event name or you can use this GA4 uh, e-commerce tracking official doc and you can come to the event name section and copy the event name from here, okay? So I'm gonna click on save. Perfect, then I'll go to the tag section. So I'll create a tag for view item. I'm going to write a v view content. Okay, perfect. And I'm going to choose tag configuration as this on Facebook pixel. And I'm going to be choosing pixel ID from here. So you can see over here Facebook pixel ID. And as the event, I'm going to choose view content from here. Okay. Then from the object properties, we are going to be uh, setting up property name and their value. Okay. So I'm going to be using from this section. So event name, content type, content name, content ID is value and currency. So you will get this from this. From this doc, you know, so I'm going to provide this doc link in the video description so that you can access this talk directly and use all the necessary event parameter names and their values from here okay so i'll go to the translate again and copy the event name from here and go to the tag manager and paste it in the property name section the next property name i'm going to be using content type okay Next one is for content name. Then I'm going to be using for content IDs. And last one I'm going to be, not the last one, value. So last one will be for currency. Okay. Perfect. So I'm going to paste it over here. So event name, for getting event name, you need to come to this doc so if you write facebook standard events then you will 
get this doc you know so from there you can copy the event name so if i scroll down a little bit then you will see an option called view content so you can copy the event name from here and paste it in the event name section make sure you are uh, using the exact naming sequence from this doc you know so i'll go to the tag manager and i will put the content type so if i go to the content type section then you can see you can use uh, you should use a content type as product or product group so for the time being i'm going to choose product okay and as the content name i have created a uh, data layer variable for content name so i'm gonna click on this and go to the dlv item name section so this will be used as content name and if i choose dlb item id then it will become content ids and from the value section i'm going to be choosing dlv price okay so this will be used as value and as the currency i'm going to be choosing dlb currency okay perfect then as the triggering option i'm going to be choosing view content trigger okay i'm going to click on save okay so the next trigger or tags i'm going to be creating is for add to cart so i'm going to click on new and write fb add to cart okay i'm going to be choosing tag configuration as facebook pixel and i'll choose facebook pixel id as this one facebook pixel id okay perfect and from the event section i'm going to be choosing add to cart from here okay so i'll give the exact property name in the add to cart as well if i try to show you the schema for view content or view item and add to cart they are same you know so you can see this is for view item ga4 schema data layer variable and everything so if i go to the add to cart then you will see the same schema is available here so if you create uh, all the variables data layer variables for view item then you don't need to create uh, uh, data layer variable again you can use it in the add to cart section so that's what i will do over here so i'll give the property name as event name so i'm gonna copy event name from here and the next one i'm gonna be copying is for content type so i'm gonna use content type next one i'm gonna be using content name then i will use content ids okay then i'm gonna use value and the last data layer variable i'm gonna be using is currency okay perfect then as the event name i'll go to the doc again and go to the add to cut section and copy the event name from here okay and paste it in the property value section as the content type i'm going to be using product okay as content name i'm going to be choosing dlb item name and as content id i'm going to be choosing dlb item id okay as value i'm going to be choosing dlb item price and as currency i'll be using dlb currency okay and we need to create a trigger for add to cart so i'm going to click on trigger and click on this plus and name the trigger as add to cart trigger okay perfect then i'm going to be choosing trigger configuration as custom event and i'll go to the add to cart event and by can see here the event name is add to cart so i'm going to copy the exact naming sequence from here and paste it in the add to cart section and you can also use it from ga4 schema okay so you can use it from here as well so i'm going to click on save i'll click on save again okay 
So head to garden view item event and tags are created. Okay. So the next next tag I'm gonna be creating is for view card. So if I go to my website media light is e-commerce okay then you can see over here you cannot choose multiple items or you cannot add to cut them add to cut multiple items at a time like you need to choose this product or this item one single time that means you cannot select multiple products at a time you cannot view multiple products at a time you cannot add this product to cart you cannot add this pro add multiple products to the cart at a single time but you cannot view you can view those products you can view cart those products uh, at a time and you can check out multiple products at a time and similarly you can purchase multiple products at a time so if i try to show you then if i choose another products from here and add it to the cart if i go to the view cart section then you can see we have two products that means we can uh, choose multiple products in the view cart section as well as in the checkout section and as well as in the purchase section so our data layer variable will be different for view cart checkout and purchase okay so i'll go to the variable section if i go to the item section uh, i'm going to be choosing view cut from here then you can see over here that if i take these items then all the item id item name and item price data layer variable will be covered no matter how many products you have chosen you know so we'll be uh, creating this data layer variable first okay then we'll create uh, another uh, variable for item name and item id you know so we'll go to the data layer uh, variable section and create a data layer variable for items okay so i'm gonna name this as e-commerce items so i'm gonna copy this from here and put it over here and i'm gonna be choosing data layer variable from here and if i go to this section then i need to copy this e-commerce because this items is inside e-commerce object so i'm gonna be choosing e-commerce first then as this one is an object so i'm going to be putting dot over here okay so i'll copy the items from here so the little layer variable will be like that e-commerce dot items okay so i'm going to click on save then i will create another variable for purchase or checkout or view cart uh item name okay then i'm going to choose variable configuration as custom javascript then i'll go to the translate section and you can see i am going to copy you you can see the code available here so if i take the item name from here so if i go to the data layer variable section then you can see over here if you take item name from here then all the item names inside array will be covered so that's what we'll do then i'll copy this code from here and paste it in the custom javascript section okay and i'll name it as purchase item name okay then i'm gonna click on save so next one i'm gonna be creating is for product id or item id purchase product id or item id so i'm going to copy this code from here and go to the data layer variable section and click on new and name this as purchase item 
IDs. So I'm going to choose variable configuration as custom JavaScript and paste the code over here. So I'm going to click on save. And for purchase value, I need to create a data layer variable. So if I go to the purchase section, you can see over here. So purchase section, you can see over here e commerce dot value so i need to use this as purchase value data layer variable so i'm going to create a data layer variable for dlb purchase value okay so i'm going to be choosing variable configuration as data layer variable okay and i'll go to the data layer section again and copy e-commerce from here and as this value is inside e-commerce object so i'm going to put dot over here e-commerce dot value okay i'm going to copy the value from here and paste it over here so i'm going to click on save okay perfect then we'll go to the trigger section we'll create a trigger for view cart okay so i'm gonna write view cart trigger then as the trigger configuration i'm gonna be choosing custom event and if i go to the data layer section then i'm gonna be choosing view cart event from here and i'll get an event name from here okay So you can see over here event view cut so i'm going to copy the event name and paste it over here then i'm going to click on save then we'll be creating a trigger for initiate checkout or begin checkout okay so i'm going to mention initiate checkout okay then as the trigger configuration i'll go to the custom event and if i go to this data layer section then i will see an event called begin checkout so i'm gonna copy the event name from here okay so you can see the event is here so i'm gonna copy it from here and paste it over here okay i'll click on save and the last trigger i'm gonna be creating is for purchase so i'll write purchase trigger then as the trigger configuration i'm going to be choosing custom event and if i go to the purchase event then we'll see an event called purchase so i'm going to copy this from here and paste it in the event name section so i'm going to click on save okay then we'll go to the tag section and we'll create a tag for view cut okay so i'm gonna put a bb for view cut okay then as the tag configuration i'm gonna be choosing facebook pixel okay then i will choose facebook pixel id from here so facebook pixel id over here and if you search view cut in the standard event section you will not get any event called view cut you can see over here no events are named as view cut so i'm going to choose custom event and give the new uh, event name as view cut okay perfect then in the object property section i'm going to create all the necessary property for view card okay so i'm going to be using event name as first property name then the next one i'm going to be using as content type then the next one is content name next property name would be content ids then i'll be using value as property name and the last one i'm going to be using is currency
Okay, perfect. Then as the event name, I will give the property value as view cart. Okay, then as the content type, I'm going to be providing the value as product. Okay, perfect. Then as the content name, I'm going to be providing purchase item name as we can choose multiple items item names in the view cart checkout and purchase section that's why i have uh, create a different data layer variable for this event for those events actually and as the content ids i'm going to be choosing purchase ids and as the value i'm going to be choosing data layer purchase value and as the currency i'm going to be choosing dlb currency okay then I'll go to the triggering section and I'm going to be choosing view cut from here and I'll click on save. Okay. Perfect. Then I will create another tags for checkout. Okay. Initiate checkout and I'm going to put a BP for initiate checkout. Okay. Perfect. And as the tag configuration, I'm going to be choosing Facebook pixel and I'll choose Facebook pixel ID from here. And as the event name, I'm going to be choosing initiate checkout. And from the object properties, we'll give all the necessary property name over here. So the first property name I'm going to be using is event name. Then next one content type next one will be for content name then content ids value and the last one will be for currency okay perfect then i am going to choose the event name from this doc so I'll go to the initiate checkout event and copy this event name from here and paste it in the property value section and as content type, I'm going to be providing product. Okay. So as the content name, I'm going to be choosing purchase item name and as the content ID, I'm going to be choosing purchase item IDs and as the value, I'm going to be providing DLB purchase value. And as the currency, I'm going to be choosing DLB currency, okay? And from the triggering section, I'm going to be choosing initiate checkout trigger, okay? Perfect. So the last tag I'm going to be creating is for purchase, okay? So I'm going to write a B purchase, okay? Then I'm going to choose tag configuration as Facebook peak gel and i'll provide facebook pixel id from the data layer section so i'm going to be choosing facebook pixel id over here and from the standard event i'm going to be choosing parses from here okay then as the object properties i will mention all the necessary object properties for purchase events you know so i'll use event name as the first property name Next one I'm going to be using is for content type, then content name, then I'll be using content IDs, then value. Next one is for currency. Okay. So you can uh, insert another. Uh, parameter name for purchase event so if you go to this section and if i scroll down a little bit then you will see an option called order id so you can copy it from here and uh, if you provide that transaction id as order id then we can pass this value so if you want you can use it yeah, although it is not necessary but you can use this one okay so i'm gonna write order underscore id okay then we'll go to the event name section and i will provide the 
purchase event name. So I'm going to copy this from the doc and paste it in the event name section. Okay. And content type, I'm going to be writing product as content type. Okay. As content name, I'll be using data layer variable called purchase item name. And as the content ID, I'm going to be providing as purchase item IDs. And as the value, I'll be selecting data layer variable purchase value okay and as the currency i'm going to be choosing dlb currency and as the order id i need to create a data layer variable for order id so i'm going to be writing dlb transaction id okay then i'm going to be choosing data layer variable from here and as the data layer variable name i'm going to be providing e-commerce dot transaction id so e-commerce inside inside e-commerce we have transaction id and as e-commerce is an object so i'm going to put dot after e-commerce then i'm going to copy transaction id from here so i'm going to be writing e-commerce dot transaction underscore id okay so then i'll click on save then order ID will be used as transaction ID. So from the triggering section, I'm going to be choosing this as purchase trigger. So I'll click on save. So we have created all the necessary tags, triggers and variables for e-commerce events. So I'm going to click on preview for checking whether it is working or not. Okay. Just wait a little bit. I'm going to click on continue. You can see the only event is firing Facebook pixel because I didn't uh, view any product. I didn't add this product to the cart. I didn't view the product to cart and I didn't go to the checkout page and I didn't make a purchase. So if I go to the website and I'm going to make a purchase, so I'm going to view the product then i will add this product to the cart then i'm gonna click on view cart i'll go to the checkout section and i need to provide all the necessary billing informations over here i have already provided all of them make sure you have also provided them then i'm gonna click on place order You can see over here thank you your order has been received okay so if i go to the tag assistant then you can see all the tags are firing be base pixel it be view content it be add to card be view card it be initiate checkout it be purchase so if i go to the purchase event and go to the variable section then you can see over here transaction id double four double six so if i go to the order id then you can see double four double six is the transaction id dlb currency usd so our currency is in usd and item id 4107 item name dnk blue shoes you can see over here in blue shoes okay then item price 200 this product price is 200 and we have purchased two products 200 into two 400 and we have versus another product 150 so total cost is 550 so if i go to the will be purchase value you can see 550 and all the items are firing like we have purchased two products that's why inside one array we are uh, we are seeing two products okay or two items you know so purchase item IDs. So as I already told you, we have purchased two items. That's why it is showing two item IDs. And 
two item names you can see over here dark brown jeans dnk blue shoes so if i go to this one then you can see over here dnk blue shoes dnk brown jeans so everything is working fine everything is working properly okay and within within couple of minutes or maybe 30 or one hour maybe 30 minutes or one hour we'll get the data in the facebook business manager section okay so yeah that's it for this video hopefully you have a clear understanding on how we can set up uh, e-commerce events for facebook you know so yeah if you like our video then you can subscribe our channel you can follow our page you have a good day